Welcome to the journal. How ugly will it get? Very. The campaign has hit bottom this very first week and seems to thrive there, down where the wild things are. Millions of Americans tune into right wing talk radio every day. Rory O'Connor is a media critic and a liberal himself who's written a book on shock talkers. He says not all of these broadcasters use violent language, but they do all share a predilection for outrage. And he says they're all practically addicted to constantly cranking up that outrage. Here's the real problem. When you shock somebody, if you come back the next time and you apply the same stimulus, it's not shocking any longer. It's already happened. So you have to ratchet it up a little bit. So how do you cut through? How do you really shock? And I think that in order to continue to outrage, you have to constantly be jacking up the pressure. And ultimately, there's going to be some deranged person out there in, in that audience who's going to say, you know what, that's a good idea. Let me act on that. The fusion of entertainment and enlightenment. Entertainers. That's what a lot of the shock talkers call themselves. O'Connor says maybe, but their words can motivate their listeners to act. Now, first and foremost, we have to recognize that many of them are uh, employed across multiple platforms. So they may say something on their radio show, but they may repeat it on their television show. They may then repeat it in their newspaper column. They may repackage the ideas into their best-selling books. Last year's debate over the immigration reform bill became a case study for Rory O'Connor. As arguments went back and forth, some of the language turned venomous. Hosts amped up their audience's outrage with attacks on the bill's supporters and verbal assaults on immigrants. I already have received at least one brilliant email today about the immigration problem. This person sent me an email said, when we defeat this illegal alien amnesty bill and when we yank out the welcome mat and they all start going back to Mexico, as a going away gift, let's all give them a little box of nuclear waste. Tell them it can, it'll heat tortillas. But do you understand no. what the New York Times wants and the far left want? They want to break down the white Christian male power structure, of which you're a part, and so am I. And they want to bring in millions of foreign nationals to basically break down the structure that we have. O'Connor says the result stunned Washington. There were massive uh, numbers of emails and letters and phone calls. You know, senators said they had to have two or three people in their office answering the calls. That was all that they could do. They were inundated. And beyond that, how do you get their attention? Well, I tell you, if you send a threatening letter to a senator's home, that gets his attention pretty fast. Florida Republican Senator Mel Martinez got a threatening letter at home. North Carolina Republican Richard Burr got a threatening call at his office. South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham told the New York Times that he and others had received threats too. The Times also reported that a mass email opposing the bill suggested that its supporters needed to be taken out by any means. The bipartisan support collapsed. The bill died and right-wing talk radio hosts took credit. This is evidence of their vast power. I mean, you know, President George Bush was pulling out all his political capital to get immigration reform passed. Uh, Trent Lott was backing him up with everything he had. And guess what? The president and the Republican leadership and Harry Reid and the Democratic leadership, they all lost. And they lost to a bunch of radio jocks.